hands. Many hands. That's what it takes to make a parish a home. All Souls Parish is that home for us. It's where we serve those in need, feed the hungry, bring hope to the hopeless. Come with me now and watch those hands at work. Watch here at the St. Vincent de Paul House, right in the heart of the parish, where the hungry are fed and cared for. Let their hands tell the story. Here at the St. Vincent de Paul House, we Vincentians are here to minister to those who are less fortunate, to those in need. No matter where they're from, from the Sanford and Lake Mary area, we are here to do the ministry of God, to be God's hand and God's feet to help them. We do such things as keeping the lights on. We help assist in rent. We do things like getting medication to people, helping them with their cars, because sometimes they even sleep in them. But we also have a food pantry to help those who are hungry, to help those in need. There are many hands that work here at St. Vincent de Paul Society both here and behind the scenes. Many hands at work. Watch now as the Knights of Columbus, the Council of Catholic Women, and many more All Souls Ministries lend their hands to the task of helping the less fortunate through their good works and charitable donations. But our hands aren't just involved in clothing and feeding our brothers and sisters. Our hands also help feed the soul through our liturgical ministries. Hands that play, hands that serve, hands that guide, hands that wash, hands that comfort, hands that bring salvation. Watch these hands. They're your pastor's hands, your neighbor's hands, your family's hands, your hands. It's your hands that make it all possible. It's your hands that bring God to those who need him most. It's your hands that make the difference. Put your hands in his and let his work be done through you by giving what you can today. Hello, thank you for listening to the tape that demonstrated what we call the hands of the parish. What you've seen is just a few examples of the hundreds of people that make this parish what it is. Without their hands, so many things wouldn't get done. But there's another element that we have to talk about and I'll use to begin this discussion the example of the church. If you have been coming to church on Sunday, you would see that we have anywhere from 50 to 150 people at any given Mass. There may be more at the Hispanic Mass, but you will see the church that can hold 800 now max out about 150. The lights of this church are turned on for the first Mass, the AC is turned on, and for the comfort of everyone who's coming to church that morning, it's kept on. In order to do that, there's an expense to that. When you look at the grounds, when you look at how clean the church is, when you look at the office, and you look at the rectory, those are expenses of the parish that without your help, would fall in disarray. The notion of you and me, the notion of us trying to tithe, even during these difficult times, 
is a very challenging notion, but I would be remiss if I did not challenge myself or you to that concept. On behalf of Father David and Ken and the staff, I want to thank all of those who have been during this time so faithful at supporting their church. It has been just an unbelievable example to me. I talk to pastors of many parishes, and many parishes aren't as lucky as we are. I don't know the reason why. All I do know is that many of you, despite the challenge of COVID-19, despite the challenge of coming to church and have to sit here or there, despite all that, still continue to support the parish financially. Many of you who can't get to church still commit themselves to support the parish financially. And that is so, so important. And I thank you for the example. I've only been tithing probably for the past 30 years. For the first 10 or 15 years of priesthood, I had this misguided notion that because I gave my life to God, I didn't have to do anything else. Well, some pastor sat me down and said, hey, stupid, if they're giving, you give. And I think he was absolutely right. So I want to encourage you not only to volunteer, if you can, as you saw previous, all the hands that make this parish go, but I'd like to challenge you as I challenge myself that I want to continue to give, even if it's sacrificial giving. My father taught me that the first check of the week went to the parish. Even when times are tough, Dad still would do that. Well, I want to challenge myself, and I want to challenge you to continue to give, or if you haven't, thinking, well, nothing's going on because the parish isn't as active, that's not true. We all need to give God what God wishes. He doesn't ask for 95%. He doesn't ask for 50%. He asks us to try to get to 10%. So I challenge you as I challenge myself. If you are giving, thank you very much. If you haven't been, please begin. Again, any time that I speak, if you have any questions with what I say, you can reach me at the office to talk further. It's just important that both hands and the support of resources that allow hands to do their thing, both are essential. We just don't pray here at All Souls. We pray, we work, we give. We give our time, we give of our talent, and today, I'm asking for you to seriously consider giving of your treasure. Why? Because we want all souls to thrive. But again, to those who have been giving faithfully during this challenging time, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a good day.